Modern digital cameras, of course, are a phenomenal feat of engineering um, and actually quite complex from the beginning of the lens as light makes its way through the optical train, hits an electronic sensor, the light is converted to a digital signal, it then goes through a series of post-processing steps and gets written out as a JPEG image. All of that is happening, of course, in a fraction of a second when you're recording either an image or a video. And you would think that we have to sort of dive right into that really complicated imaging system, but it's gonna turn out that we can go back quite a bit and think about really, really simple cameras in order to start to model the image formation process. And what we're gonna do is go way far back to the camera obscura. The camera obscura is simply a box with a hole in it. And amazingly enough, this simple uh, camera, if you wanna call it that, is a pretty good model of a modern digital camera like the one that's recording me right now. So let's talk about this camera obscura. So what is this? This is basically just a box that you see here and a hole in the front where you see those rays coming in. And I've taken off the front face here, but think about it as a sealed box. So think about getting a refrigerator box, cutting a small hole in it. Um, and what's going to happen is that that box with a hole in it is going to model a modern digital camera. Okay, so let's see how that works. Well, we're gonna start with a light. We're, we are nowhere if we don't have light. So we have a light source, which I've drawn right here as a small yellow dot. That light, of course, shines down and illuminates uh, the scene that you see over here. And of course, what happens is that light strikes a point on the person's uh, head, um, labeled A right here, and light reflects out in all directions. Sometimes it reflects evenly, and sometimes it's unevenly. It depends on the actual properties of, of the surface. But one of those rays, one of those long blue lines that I've shown you, is going to bounce off, is, reflects off the, the sun, bounces, and enters that little hole, pinhole, in the front of the camera. And by the way, the reason why it's a really, really small hole is to allow just one of those rays of light, um, not more than one. And of course, that, that light ray keeps going and eventually hits the back of the box right here. And we see that point A mirrored or image there. And now we repeat that process. And so now the light um, shines down, hits, say, the foot. That's point D. Single ray comes out, goes through the pinhole and strikes the back of the sensor, and we do that over and over and over again, and we get literally an image. And this is, I'm not kidding, go, you can get a, a refrigerator box, uh, seal it all up, go inside of it, open a little hole, and on the back of the, of the side of where the hole is, you will create an image. Many museums have these beautiful camera obscures where you can see this image formation process. Now, what's missing here? Well, what's missing here is we're not recording the image. I mean, we're sort of recording it because it's in the back of the box, but we need something to record it more permanently. And so what we do is we slide into the back of the box some photosensitive material. It used to be film, 35 millimeter film, Kodak film, for example. And these days, it's a different type of sensors. It's a CCD sensor or a CMOS sensor that, that converts analog light into a digital signal. Whatever your favorite photosensitive material is, is, slap that in the back of the box, and then when light strikes the back of the box, the image will be recorded. And that is essentially what a modern camera does, but with some bells and with some whistles. Now, throughout, we're going to need some nomenclature. So let me go ahead and start defining some terms that we're gonna use over and over and over again. So first, this is my pinhole camera right here. Um, it's just, think about sort of looking down onto the box this way. This is the top. Uh, this is the aperture right there. That's that small little hole where the light went through. And on the back over here is the photosensitive material. And I'm going to, so that's the photosensitive material there, and we're gonna define the aperture right here. And I just need a few more terms to define. So I'm gonna define the focal length as the distance between the aperture and the photosensitive material. I have control over that. I can make it small or large. You'll see later on this has a big impact on the image formation process. And I'm going to define the optical axis. This is the ray that is perpendicular to the photosensitive material, exiting out through the aperture and out through the world. So we call this the 
optical axis. Okay, so optical axis, focal length, aperture, and then of course the photosensitive material. Okay, we're gonna need a few more terms after this, but these are the building blocks for a modern camera. Okay, so what do we have? The first part of modeling a modern digital camera is starting with the camera obscura. You have a box with a hole in it, a photosensitive material in the back, and light enters in and forms an image on the back. And from there, we're going to pick up the image formation process next. 